Harry from The Bike Shed. We're back with another Staff Bikes video, and this is my custom Honda CX500. So some of you may remember I did a video a few years back of my custom Honda CB550. Fortunately, that was stolen, little shits. But it was during a time when I was sketching and designing my own builds, and I thought this would be a perfect time to actually redo and start over on a new build. So I went and chose the Honda CX500 because um, it's a great donor bike and it's a really aesthetically pleasing engine. So it's a kind of amalgamation of all my favorite builds that I've seen, all rolled into one, all of my favorite parts, pieces. Um, and so I created this. Uh, to do that, I needed someone with the right handiwork. So I approached Jackson, Jax, of Jackson Motorcycles, to come help me do it. So we sourced online, found a couple Honda CX 500s for actually for the price of one. So we thought, why not? Let's get both. So we drove three hours into the night up to Peterborough, loaded the bikes onto the van, drove them back down to his garage, and uh, linked them both up into petrol lines and figured out which one was the best to use. Now, to go through the build, I thought. I'd uh, bring on Jackson, he's here today, to talk me through all the specific parts and pieces that he's done. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So here he is. All right guys, I'm Jack. So some of you may know Jack from his other videos that he's done with us, with his XJR and Annalisa's Triumph Tiger. He's also had a couple of bills displayed at the Bike Should Show, which is actually back this year on the last weekend of May. And this bike is gonna be on display. Uh, Jack's a pretty handy guy to know around London. I mean, he's helped a few of us out, me countless times, and I know Cameron down on, roadside assistance, and uh, yeah, he, he gets about, you know, in his truck, <laughs> yeah. helping people. Working. But uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> he's here today to talk with us about the build. Yeah, you know, it's been a while since we've been at the shed. The bike's been maybe a bit longer than that, but it's finally here. Obviously, I like to say it's come out good. I think we're both pretty happy with the Even final result. Even though he says so himself. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, it's great. Yeah, there's a lot of work gone into it. There's a lot of good parts on it. You know, Dan's been pestering us for a while to do the video, so you know, maybe we'll see if we still know how to do this. Start yeah, front, should we do the go usual through <laughs> front to back and we'll talk through all the parts? Yes. Do you remember? Maybe. Okay, so the CX, uh, there's not much left of it after we were done with it, pretty much just the engine. Uh, but we're gonna start here at the front. So what we've got is a 40 spoke black anodized 16 inch rim by Sun Rims, um, just to beef up the front a little bit. Um, then we sourced a 320 mil uh, disc it's actually a twin disc caliper with Tokiko brakes. Uh, these actually came paired with these 50 mil uh, black anodized GSXR 750 forks um, that I think look really good. Um, standard, they usually come with 35 mil, but we wanted a bigger heavy look. While we're here, let's talk about um, this front mod guard here. The so jack's actually <laughs> welded in a really nice wire mount here, which I really, really like. Um, I mean, I just gave him this piece and I said, make it work. <laughs> and, uh, and he did. Um, yeah, it makes yeah. it look a lot tighter at the front. Obviously, if we were going to stick with the original GSXR mudguard, they're a lot bigger, a lot chunkier, and they just wouldn't suit the style at all. You know, being a CX500, the biggest letdown for me is always that spindly front end. So the fact we managed to change all that out would be a real shame just to bulk it up with a bunch of plastic. Hmm. Um, obviously, because we went for the GSXR brakes, coming up, all the levers were replaced with GSXR parts. So masking and clutch lever were all made to fit, obviously, custom brake lines and clutch lines. Again, for the cafe racer look, we went for clip-ons. Yeah, uh, with the clip-ons, I knew I wanted a racy look, so I saw some Renfell medium grips. Uh, with that, we've got a race throttle, which is very small. Rizoma bar end indicators. Uh, no mirrors on this bike. If you look very carefully, we've got, what are these, 12 mil? Somewhere? Yeah. I think 12 mil push, momentary push button switches. Um, I didn't like the standard big ones, and I didn't want a whole mount on there. I just wanted something super simple and clean to go along with the flush look. Um, so Obviously coming there. into the wiring on the bike, is what we'll show later, is that uh, the whole bike's powered by an M unit, so the switches work really well for that and obviously it's paired up to the Moto Gadget Speedo. Um, one of the big features that Harry opted for on this was to get the Cognito Moto Yoke. Um, you know, suits it really well, it's well made, it's a massive feature on the bike and it just ties the whole front together really. Yeah, they do this inbuilt Moto Gadget Speedo in there, they CNC it in with the LED lights which I thought was really neat. Um, and actually, the indicator lights, I think, work. Remember what button that yeah, is? Yeah, works off of you. There we go. That's really neat. So you got your idiot lights and the resume indicators. 
Um, a big thing that people do on CX500s is the tank. The tank's really popular and a lot of people use it on their build. So when Harry decided to change it, it was a bit of a shock, but I think we went for the right option. Obviously it's a lot slimmer than stock, but once it was made to fit the bike, obviously there's been some changes to the frame and the mounts and stuff. It does suit it a lot better with the old style paint job as well. Went for that brush finish. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it cuts in perfectly where the engine, the V-twin actually sticks out. Um, and so that was the kind of look I wanted. Yeah. But to kind of keep the flow going with the engine color and the tank, um, we actually opted for this. Yeah, a lot of the bike obviously brushed. being the only blue part on the bike, but the silver does tie in the engine and obviously other chrome features and polished bits and pieces. The, um, the engine was obviously taken out, as I say, Harry got two CXs at the start of this, so we opted for this one in the end. It was still taken apart, checked everything out, had it been run for probably, what, 10, 15 years, something like that? Something, I think it was, it was last registered in 1990. Um, yeah, I so think that was it. It had, it had about 70,000 miles on the clock, yeah, I think. So it was sitting about for a while. <laughs> Obviously, once you took it apart, it was, although the engine is original, we ended up replacing a few bits, water lines and stuff like that, that were just too corroded up, turn the stat and bits and pieces. Yeah, I mean, while we're up here, Jack, let's talk a little bit about the paint color. So I got some inspiration from this he uh, helmet that we had here in stock uh, called the Head and, I think it was a Head and Heron Racer, and it was a shortlist blue. Um, and I fell in love with the color and I thought I really wanted that on, on the bike. So I said to Jack, here's the picture of the helmet. And, uh, that color doesn't actually exist, or not that we found. <laughs> so well done, Hedden. Yeah. But we went with a Subaru blue, and uh, we did it first time. Came out a little bright. Um, and Colors then, are always a difficult one because it depends yeah. on the lighting, depends how it's been laid. Obviously, this has got a bit of metallic in it, so from one sprayer to another, you can always get a different finish. So I think we sprayed it a few times in the end, but it was a bit light. So the last time we changed the the style of the brushing on the side. Darker the paint a little bit. I think you was away at the time. You put a little um, bit of black in there. Yeah, just darkened it down a bit, obviously before the clear went in. But it was a lot better. The, before it was just too leery, I suppose. And it just didn't suit the rest of it. Obviously. It was a little hot rod. We yeah. just wanted something a little quieter. Yeah, so it does finish off well, obviously, polished cap. You know, That's keep, a motor piece. Style. Mo yeah, motor uh, cap. I quite like the contrast. There was, there was some modification to the tank anyway, obviously, to get it to fit the frame, but also some of the original wiring, like the coils and stuff that are underneath the tank was cut away and made to fit. So it's all been spaced out again, even the fitting of the cap, that was all welded in. So you can't buy something like this, but you can definitely make it. Yeah, we'll buy from Jack. Anyway, <laughs> the seat. This took quite a few times to get right. Um, we wanted a seat hump, um, which also we'll show you uh, underneath has actually got a battery in there, uh, but to go along with the cafe kind of racer styling. Um, we chopped through quite a few blocks yeah, firm. yeah, the Don't seat's we? been done a couple of times as well. It was more um, trial and error as such, obviously, it's being a smaller tank, once the rear subframe was made, which is different to the original bike, then the seat needed to fit that as well. So by the time we made the seat pan, it gives you something to mold around, but yeah, as I say, I think we cut the seat out two or three times till we got a shape that we were actually happy with. But then even once you do that, then the upholstery is a whole other story. So that was who, <laughs> Josie did this? Yep, right. Josie, she's done at Jane's Co. They've done all the upholstery James on Co. it. Is that her Insta? Yeah, cool. yeah. The, um, yeah, obviously we wanted that diamond stitch pattern. Um, but I think it came out really well. Obviously we tried to tie it all in together. Maybe not the best in the rain. But. I mean, what happened <laughs> first is uh, the whole thing was Alcantara because I just wanted a very yeah. clean seat. And then I think after two times of me sitting on it when I came to the garage, it split down the middle because the material was too thin. Um, and so we decided actually let's keep the central piece, Alcantara, because that's the bit you're sitting on, and that's probably not going to get wet. Um, and then the outside part is just a black vinyl uh, leather. Yeah. One of the, the key things for me, especially if you've seen my XJR or other bikes, it's always to make a bit of space at the back. You don't want, for me, I don't want a big bulky sports bike. So if I was having a cafe bike, I want to keep this area clear. So as Harry said, the battery's under here, the electrics are underneath. Try to keep the tray as minimal as possible, really. So ignition switch. This is basically a control for the gauge, so you can flip through menus and stuff like that. But we just wanted to keep the whole area, a lot of space around it. You know, we want the bike to look airy. Um, if you know the CX originally, it used to be a twin shot bike. So we converted it to single mount. Um, doing the build, we actually had to make these mounts to fit everything, obviously they're all welded up. Actually saying that, the first design that I bought to you was actually a twin shock. 
Uh, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. went, hang on, no, 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 let's, let's make this into a monoshock. And I yeah, thought, that's it. Cause we, especially ambitious. with the style of frame you wanted, if we went for that twin shock, yeah. you, know, you would have put all this effort in, slim all this down, and then put two bulky shock mm. absorbers on the back. It just wouldn't look right. But it looks perfect with that. The color on that actually matches the tank. And we actually sourced that, I think, as is. It just came yeah, like yeah, that. I think that, that was a Yamaha R3. R3. Uh -huh. Yeah, an R3 shock. Yeah. Um, but again, I think we did have another shock at the time. I think Vicky actually gave us a shock, doesn't it? Yeah, thanks, Vic. We borrowed your uh, Buell. <laughs> but it, yeah, it was off a different bike. It was just of a completely different weight. So I think technically, even if you put that shock on it, it just would have been too stiff. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking a massive bike and trying to fit it on here. It's quite a light bike, obviously, even originally the CX is light. But once we removed everything, you know, it's like a bicycle in the end of it, you know? Yeah. The, um, right, let's talk about the velocity stacks and the carbs here. Yeah, so again, obviously, again, with the frame, you lose all the airbox, stuff like that. So the options are basically pod filters or velocity stacks. Um, if you've ever done it to your own bike or thinking about it, it's not a basic case of just bolting them on. They've got to be tuned and set up with the carburetors. That took quite a long time to tune them. Yeah, that's it. If, you know, you can do these things on dynos and stuff like that, but we obviously didn't have access to it. So by running the bike, trial and error, you can get it tuned. And obviously now it's running pretty well. I'd yeah, say. I'd say pretty well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> standard um, OEM carbs. You can get you know, performance carbs, but we thought this is not going to be a super performance bike. Um, so let's just kind of keep part yeah. of the engine standard. Uh, we've got a Canon. Pod filter there. Um, just a breather. Just yeah. a breather there. Um, and then moving down to the paint colour, this is, what is it, like a pepper grey, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like a gunmetal almost. Gun metal gun finish. The, um, you know, as we said earlier with the engine, there was a lot of things out to get changed. You can just kind of see a glimpse of the water pipes here. But where the bike was sitting for so long, there was quite a bit of corrosion so and stuff like that. Up, yeah, so everything was kind of replaced that needed to be, etc. All the nuts, all the bolts, yeah, new polish, I mean, the whole thing's been sprayed. You've got new gaskets. New seals, new yeah. jets, and everything in the carbs. Um, moving to the front, we actually swapped out the whole exhaust system, and I wanted something very angular that would just cut the 90 degree angle of the engine. Yeah. Um, that would kind of enhance the actual design of the engine itself. Yeah. So, I mean, what is it? That is just a straight 90 degree yeah, cut so there. The big thing for me on, especially custom bikes, is a lot of people want a lot of noise. Um, so you would think that this would be too leery, but even performance wise, it's not particularly good for the bike just to have straight pipes. No. Um, so in the pipes is a baffle that is built into them, although you That's wouldn't be able to see it. That's a slash cut, I think, Harley Sportster. Uh, yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. I saw some slash yeah, cut, I think you've got the tips, there, yeah. And yeah. then wrapped it. So you can either get stainless steel ones, yeah. um, but we actually thought, why not wrap them? And I think the gold actually Kind yeah, of works suits, really yeah. well with the contrast. Yeah, that's it. It goes against the blue well. But yeah, we made all the down pipes. Obviously, the tips are a nice chrome finish. Just yeah. tie it all in. Um, so yeah. sets. So, <laughs> a massive thing where the standard CX. mount, I think, comes out of here and sits there. Obviously, this is a cafe racer. You put rear sets on them. Um, and obviously, that works with the ergonomics. So, I sourced these um, race. It's like universal yeah, rear kind sets. Kind of aren't universal yeah. race rear sets. Yeah. Um, but in order to make that work, Jack actually did his magic and made these custom linkages himself. Yeah, took a bit of inspiration from bracket. some other builds, but yeah. um, a big problem with the CX again, it, it's quite a unique bike when you get into the details of it. So there's no real bolt on option and such for a CX when it comes to rear sets. So mm -hmm. yeah, took some inspiration that we've seen online. Um, let's say you'll see the gear side as well, but the brake side. Let's bring, let's bring down around and show me the <laughs> gears. All the linkages have been made up to basically work with the stock bike. So. It's quite a distance when you consider the original gear lever is, that is it, with your foot peg forward, you know, it's quite far back. Um, it just wouldn't have worked the other way, it's not a commuter bike anymore. So, <laughs> once everything was changed, you know, it still works just as well. If I saw a courier on this, yeah. that would be, I mean, that would make my day. That's the first thing you get, package. when anyone ever sees it, they want to tell you a courier story about CX500. Yeah. Oh, the little um, oil, oil temperature temp gauge, yeah. that was quite a neat piece. Normally it's just a cap, um, but I've seen some people do this and I think it's quite nice, just adds a little bit more detail onto it. Yeah, that's it. Um, it it's quite nice as well, if you ever see an original CX, the tank does hide a lot of the top of the engine, so you lose a lot of the detail, whereas now, obviously, you can kind of see it a bit more. You get to know what's yeah, actually you underneath, get, you know? You get to hide all, you know, yeah, hide it, all Jack's well, terrible you handiwork. Well, you want to be able to see it. <laughs> so. Right, now going into the back. So, this swing arm is actually, we broke through the first one, didn't we? Yeah. I uh, think it rusted on the Yeah, similar to the rest of the bike. It'd been sitting for a while, um, it had a bit of rust damage, and it was just, you know, we're putting a bit more stress on the swing arm, so, so we Dan, want to say it's definitely solid. If you can get in here solid. and just see how tight that wheel is in there. <laughs> so after yeah. doing loads of research, I mean, that is pretty much just a 
paper thin width. Uh, loads of research. This is the widest possible tire. I mean, too wide, in fact, that we had to cut into the swing arm, re-weld it in order to fit the tire in yeah, there. Yeah, just make a bit of clearance. This is a 160-60 uh, rim. Again, on to 40 spoke black anodized rim on the back, yeah. um, wrapped in Metzler Racetech RR Slick. So this is a really soft rubber. Uh, not ideal in the wet, not ideal on a cold day, but you take bike, it out in the, the summer. Not, the bike's not built for that. It's a summer bike. <laughs> um, one other cool detail. So the, if any of you notice, the actual standard rim on the CX, on this specific one, is actually a uh, Comstar wheel. Uh, and the Comstar comes with this hub, which is like, mounted in it. Um, and obviously to match the spokes, we, we weren't going to just keep it. And so I actually sent this hub unit off. We drilled it out, sent the hub unit off to a guy, one man band in the Isle of Wight. And he himself, he makes these brackets, these flanges here. Um, and he anodized the, anodized the piece here, laced them onto the, uh, the flanges and onto the wheel and then send it back all in one piece. Um, and yeah, so it, it would imagine. have been weird if we had one lace wheel, one knot. So. I've seen people do that. It yeah. looks really weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, now we've got a complete matching set from two different places. That's a sun rim. I'm not too sure where he sourced this from. I'll have to ask him. Um, but yeah. Yeah, just finished off the rear nice. Obviously, something we ain't mentioned yet. Tail light. Tail light. Um, again, it's very easy to get right to the end of a build and then just add on some chunky tail lights or chunky indicators. Does that turn on? Um, oh. Well, with the lights, yeah. That's when you got your lights on. It's all built in, just like LED Tron. strip. Yeah. Look at that. Got okay, everything built into it. Your indicators, totally legal. Yeah, totally um, race. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually, another thing Jackson corrected me on, I mean, I had this uh, strip, uh, aluminium strip that went over, you know, that we drilled in holes. Um, and that, I, that was part of my design originally through just the whole Just like build. an accent piece really, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it was just to, just to cover this piece, uh, but it didn't really work and Jax called me and was like, no, it's not gonna work. And I was like, yes, it will. And we went back and forth and I came and looked at it and I was like, yeah, you're right, it doesn't work. And uh, yeah, anyway, he won that. Yeah, it does, it does look a lot tidier. <laughs> and even when I was doing the seat pan, like I said, I'd rather make this flush in. Cause as I say, you can build all the seat and then just add some piece on, it can get a bit chunky. But yeah. now it's a bit thinner. It's quite interesting because you can see the frame exposed here and then it cuts in onto the seat. Um, and that's quite a unique design that we, we came up with that we didn't want to expose the whole, the whole frame. Um, coming down, lastly, this really tidy piece here. This is just a uh, plate light. Um, I think that was just, a, just an online source. I can't remember the exact name I got that from. Um, but it's really nice brushed aluminium, high quality. Um, and that just lights up this. Yeah, it's made up of brackets to work on the old shop. Yeah, bit. that was just another piece. It, as you can tell, it's a lot different from <laughs> the stop bike, if you ever see one. As I say, everyone wants to tell you about their commuter stories when they had a CX or Courier in. But um, yeah, I think it's been a lot of fun, isn't it? You know, yeah. It's definitely different, definitely something that catches the eye. Dan, I want to show you something. So this all connects up to an M unit. So if you have the MoRide app, just get this thing loaded. Yeah, so the whole thing connects via Bluetooth. And so you pick your bike, there's the Honda. No ride ready. You can turn on the bike and the ignition with your phone. So if you lose your keys, so this is the ideal setup that you just get on your bike, you have your phone on you, the ignition starts and you can go. But if you, you know, forget your phone or your phone's out of battery, you've got the key set up down here that you can use. But I think that's just a really nice addition that uh, M unit do. After Harry's CB nightmare, it's always important to have an alarm on the bike. Yeah, a high-tech <laughs> bike in a vintage frame. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Right, yeah. so guys, thank you for watching. And the next video you'll probably see is Dan and his yeah. <laughs> pretty highly customized build by Dan and Out. Um, so yeah, you'll see that next. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and see you next time. Come on, Jack. No, <laughs> <laughs>
fucking thing. What popped off? The, the cat. What a big intro, Harry. Full on. The man, the myth, the legend. The man, the myth, the number. Down, down, <laughs> the and, man, out, down the and out, we're busy. So Jack's here. Right, guys, I'm Jack. But then he's got to go, isn't he? <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say, I'm inside. This is happening again. I oh, know. You right, I'm Jack. Jack's mate, that looks fucking funny, doesn't it? <laughs> Did you know I'm Jack? I've been here four times. <laughs> looks like I just walked in off the street. <laughs> Give me this? a broom, I'll like come in and be like, it'd be easy if you could just film this and just be like, think. The, um, oh God. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he filming it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just put this in. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the show? The no, it wasn't. We're getting there now, we're getting there. Only another couple okay. of hours, we'll be done. This is Triumph Tiger on the YouTube. Uh, Jack's had a on couple- the, of... On the YouTube. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, who says that? It's a lot of that. World Wide Webbing's face tweet. You snap. <laughs> Hop down, all right. Complete oh. tire, that sounds like shit. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. The worst bit is I know I'm gonna fuck it up after. So, oh. so here he is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I was already in then. That was gonna be the one. That I was it. I could feel I'm, it. That I'm done. It. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and the build. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this and all things custom motorcycles and everything about the shed. See you next time.